All right, who heard the, the scripture before John 3.16? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. My brother, you heard that before? And to you, tell me, what does that mean? Any one of y'all. What does that mean to you if you hear that scripture? All right, when you say God for our sins, I like that. Whose sins? When you say ours. When we was taught that, when I was growing up, my mother was in church. She told me that means God loved the whole world. We got the whole world in his hands. Red, yellow, black, and white. They all precious in his sight. I'm mixing a couple of them up, but you know those nursery rhymes. What are those songs to do? It's to convince you of something that's not true. It's called spell casting. It's called witchcraft. Like the little sisters. You got it, John 3, 16? Yes, sir. Like the little sisters up the street. They was twerking and dancing. You know those songs put a spirit on our young daughters. That's why they dance like that in the club. That's why they dress that way. Because there's a spirit behind it. Those songs, those uh, nursery rhymes, is a spirit to seduce you and to believe in something that's false. Read what you got. John chapter 3 verse 16. We're going to bring this out right now. Read. For God so loved the world. Stop. He said, for God so loved. Love the world. Spell love. L-O-V-E-D. That E-D means past tense. Which means whatever he loved in the beginning, he loved right now. It never changed. Read it again. For God so loved the world. Stop. Go, let's show what God loved in the beginning. Let's show what God loved. I want um, Second Chronicles of 9 and 8. You know what I want? Yes, sir. Check it out. Let's see who he loved in the beginning. Then we're going to see if it changed. We're going we're gonna to break it down. We're going to go step by step with John 316 me. Because we were taught it meant everybody. But we're going to get the truth. Read. Second Chronicles chapter 9, verse 8. Read. Blessed be the Lord thy God. Read. Which delighted in thee to set thee on his throne. Come on. To be king for the Lord thy God. Read. Because thy God loved Israel. Wait, who God loved? Israel. Who God loved? Israel. Go back to John 316. Now we're getting context. All right? Because this is Jesus Christ and Nicodemus having a conversation. Two Jews having a conversation about their family history. Read. For God so loved the world. Read. That he gave his only begotten son. Stop. What world mean? World. When you think world, what you think it mean? Whole world, whole planet, huh? What about you, sir? What world mean? Let's see what the word world means. Let's find out who the world is. Isaiah 45, 17. Watch this. Read. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. Read. But Israel. But who? But Israel. Read. Shall be saved. Shall, wait, shall be what? Shall be saved. Read. In the Lord with everlasting salvation. He shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. What did he just call Israel? World without end. Go back to John 3, 16. Now we know he loved Israel. Now we know the world is Israel. Read John 3, 16 again. For God so loved the world. Israel. That he gave his only begotten son. Come on. That whosoever. Believe. Believe it in him. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you might be saying, all right, officer Dyer. All right. You got world. You got love. But it said whosoever. That's what we got you. It says whosoever. Let's see who the whosoever is. Read. Acts chapter 2 verse 21. Here we go. And it shall come to pass. Read. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Watch this. Ye men of Israel. Of who? Ye men of Israel. Come on. Hear these words. So who is the whosoever? <laughs> the men of Israel. You see, so Only. go back to John 3, 16. Only. You see this, huh? You see what happened? Now watch this. We're going to do something even more special. We're going to start at verse 14 because don't we want context? You might be saying, Zadiah, you bringing it out of context. That said it over here, but it didn't say it over there. Watch this. Read what you got. John chapter 3, verse 14. Read. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Stop. Who was in the wilderness with Moses? Let's use common sense. Remember the Passover, right? The, Moses led the children of Egypt, out, the children of Israel out of Egypt. Into the wilderness, correct? Who was who was uh, Moses in the wilderness with, though? That's what he was leading out, right? Read it again. 
Verse 14, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, Read. even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He said the same way the Son of Man, which is Christ, got to be lifted up the same way Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. I'll give you an example of what the serpent in the wilderness looked like. You who ever seen an a, a ambulance rolling down the street? And on it got a snake around a little pole? Like, I, I hate to, I hate to cut you Come off. on, come on. That was on them. The snakes on the, the pole. Yeah, the snakes was on the pyramids in the holographics. And they used that over here as medical, but it was actually medical back there, right? It was it was a it was a representation of Israel being healed. Because it was fiery serpents that was um, killing the Israelites for murmuring against God. That's right. Watch this. Let's get you the hey, we're gonna give you the history. Watch this. Numbers chapter, go ahead. Numbers chapter 21, verse 6. Wait. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. Watch who died. Read. And much people of Israel. Of who? Of Israel. Of who? Of Israel. Died. There you go. That's why we had, Moses had to lift up the serpents in the wilderness. So that we looked upon it, so the Most High God gave healing to our people and he would stop killing us. That's what that was. So when you see the ambulance rolling down the street or a hospital, and you see the serpents around it, that's going into healing. That's why it means healing. But guess what? That's our symbol. That's not the so-called white man symbol. He's doing it because we don't know no better. They done brainwashed us. Come on. Go back to John 3.16. Look at this. John chapter 3, verse 14. Read. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, Read. even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Watch this. Read on. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now let's give another one for whosoever. Give me Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Because you might say, well, you only say it at one time. You might be taking that out of context. Watch what the Bible does. Watch this. This is the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 32. Read. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord Read. shall be delivered. Come on. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. Who's Zion and Jerusalem? The Israelites. That's what that is. Let's give them, go, now go meet, give me John 18, 20. Because you might say, man, that was an Old Testament. We, we here to remove all doubt. We know what we talk about when it comes to this Bible. We study this Bible. How you doing, sister? Y'all need to come learn. Read. John chapter 18, verse 20. Read. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. She spake openly to the world. Read. I ever taught in the synagogue. Now let's see who's in the synagogue in the buildings. Read. In the temple. Come on. Whether the Jews. Whether the who? The Jews. Whether the who? The Jews. Read. Always resort. So who was oh, they talking in the synagogue to? Who was she talking to? The Jews. The Israelites. Wow. So it's not talking about everybody. The Bible never been for everybody. So We're the army of God. Just because you got the power. Don't mean nothing. It's how you wield that power. We're gonna continue to be the bigger and better and godly camp. But ain't nobody gonna change us, ain't nobody gonna yeah. manipulate us. I gotta pray for my ops. Want me to fall so bad, they pulling out all the stops. Call out the work to be done and they want me to stop. Fulfilling my destiny, I'm on my way to the top. You don't speak about black on black crime, man. It's just too much of it. It's just way too much of it, man. We should work together, band together, and help one another pull each other up. Get the kingdom, you can see it in my eyes. We got heathens watching, eat them, plotting, demons in the skies, eat them once they try to stop, but now we right back on the road. That's right. Okay. The next time we have boots on the ground, because we have a common, common goal. My common goal is living. My common goal is black men living in Kansas City. Psalms 147 verse 19. The Bible never been for everybody. The Bible is the history book of the Israelites. The present day of the Israelites and the hit in the, the future of the Israelites. That's right. That's what the Bible is. That's right. Read. Psalms chapter 147 verse 19. Come on. He showed his word unto Jacob. Jacob is the our forefather, the forefather of the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. Read. His statutes and his judgments. Unto Israel. Come on. He had not dealt so. God didn't deal what? Come on. With any nation. Read. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Come on, man. 
He said he ain't dealing with nobody else that nor did they know the Bible. So when they was teaching us the Bible, what you think they was teaching us? Nah. Teaching us how to love them and hate ourselves. That's right. Nation is unity. 